All right, folks, another week of WWE content is in the books. And between what happened on TV and what happened at Elimination Chamber, the WrestleMania card is taking more and more shape as we look to like finalize what's on there and potentially forecast what else will be added. Speaking of Elimination Chamber, if you want a full breakdown of that, I'll link the video somewhere here, here, or I'll put it in a comment somewhere. It'll be linked somewhere so you want to check that out but for the week that was wwe let's go over that and let's see what it means for the future going forward not only for programming weekly but also the granddaddy of them all wrestlemania my friends this is the review preview so we we learned on every single show this week that we're going to get some big time feuds for not only wrestlemania those two days but also that whole weekend which includes NXT's PLE, Stand and Deliver. And you know, some of these things, like some of these feuds we're talking about here are ones that not only have we been asking for for the last so-and-so, but uh, the people, the competitors themselves have been asking for for a while. Some of them we're gonna see like retribution happen. We're gonna see revenge take place. We're gonna see feuds that not necessarily people are clamoring for, but it should be a good time nonetheless. And hopefully, in the era of the long title reign under Triple H, we will see some titles change hands, finally. But, I digress. Let's go ahead and jump right into the week that was, so we can talk about the week that is moving forward and beyond. Kicking off, as always, with Monday Night Raw, Drew McIntyre and Cody Rhodes opened the show, and Drew McIntyre picked up the win after interference from uh jimmy uso and solo sokoa with solo basically recreating the wrestlemania 39 spot of spiking cody as he's about to win drew took it drew looked at the bloodline like oh how could you but then it's like oh wait i can win so he took advantage hit the one two three and gave cody rose his first like basically his first i think it's his first overall pinfall loss but definitely his first singles pinfall lost since wrestlemania 39 last year so that was a huge deal but to set up drew for lunation chamber and to for and for the bloodline to send a, a message to cody you know you mess with us basically you mess with the bull get the horns something like that also on raw we had a last chance uh battle royale for the women with the winner getting the last spot in elimination chambers uh in elimination chamber match for women and it was one by returning Raquel Rodriguez, who, if you don't know, was had a very s serious mast cell activation. I believe that's what it is, mast cell activation syndrome, something like that. And you know, she shared her story on socials, and it, it looked bad. So, also for her to be able to return and compete and win, I thought it was, a, you know, it's all right. Battle rail. The big point big part was the last bit of it to where you know uh raquel uh thought she won but turns out like chelsea green was hiding for m most of the second half of it came back in to almost uh toss raquel but you know raquel is just strong she's just that woman toss chelsea out raquel gets her spot in the elimination chamber match and uh, uh moving to Rhea and naya they had one last interview hyping up there a limitation chamber match and you know set the stage for again i said it in the review for limit chamber it's it's all about Rhea. it always is and it always will be no i'm kidding but uh yeah they had that that was a cool segment moving on and speaking so speaking of the the limit chamber all the women who were participating came out like they do to hype it up every woman got you know their 15 seconds to a minute to talk about oh i'm gonna win and you know, you suck and i'm the better and all that kind of stuff and i, th I said this in the, in the lunch chamber preview but naya was barely talked about here at all and i don't know if that was intentional or just like subconsciously but like it brought naya out uh at the, at the end to lay out all the women and set herself up to look dominant for the upcoming title match and a, a weird thing too about the show uh 
I guess because they're, they're in Anaheim, there's like some sort of super deal between Anaheim and TKO, which is WDE's parent company. But there was a Netflix execs there. If you don't know, uh, Monday Night Raw is moving to Netflix next year. And there was a uh, UFC fighter, Michael Chandler, calling out Conor McGregor at a Raw. Not like at to fight out on Raw, but just to call him out an Octagon on a Raw. So that was weird. There's also a boxer there and a, a bull rider. So, you know, that's your thing. I'm sure you popped. Awesome for you. Not too much of note really happened until the main event, which was Gunther versus Jay Uso for a, uh, the Intercontinental title. And a fan freaking fantastic match. Absolutely killed it. And it, 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 there was a couple points where Jay was about to win and Gunther would kick out. Or Gunther would, would uh, do something, Jay kicks out. And in the final seconds, Jay hit like, I think, two or three spears. And then the ooh splash. And as the refs counting one, two, when he hits two, the timekeeper's bell starts going off like the match is over. And the ref's like, you know, I didn't do that. And you look over, and it's that that scoundrel, that snake, that ne'er do well. A hooded Jimmy Uso shows up and uh, distracts Jay. G Gunther takes advantage for a two, and then Jimmy like gets up, hits Gunther, and then take goes outside, dives on uh, Jimmy to uh, take him out. Gets back in the ring. Gunther takes advantage for the one, two, three, and to retain his title. And afterwards, Jimmy hit two uh, ooh splashes on Jay. And he like looked him in the face. Was like, no matter how big you get, I'm still the big brother. Cause I think they're, I think Jimmy was born like 12 minutes before Jay or something. Like that. I don't know. But that's how the raw ended with Jimmy standing over Jay. So that's dope. I'm, we're gonna talk about that at the end of the uh, the video. But yeah, that's how raw ended. And if and that that inter if you if you don't watch nothing else from the week. Watch that Intercontinental uh, title match. It was so good. Uh, even the ending, ending made sense, so I wasn't too mad at it. But that match, the thing before it was so good. All right, moving on to Tuesday night NXT. The uh, show started, like, even, like, no interest or anything. It started basically right into the North American title match between Oba Femi and Lexus King. It was a sprint of a match, but I thought it was done well. Lexus King came in with game plan, attacked the arm. Oba, I think, won a few times at the fight from underneath. And it was it was good. Uh, Mid-match, Mr. Stone came out. If you don't know, last week, Lexus said some, said some shit about his kids. So he came out, provided a long enough distraction for Oba to take advantage and hit the one, two, three. Again, a fun little decent sprint of a match. No, uh, nothing offensive good opener all right I'm moving on to braun breaker and baron corbin the wolf dogs celebrating their tag team title win they're coming out say oh yeah feels so good having fun and then chase you interrupts and they come out and said hey the former champs the family you know, they promised us a tag title shot so we deserve you know next in line basically which brought out Nathan Frazier and Axiom who said no uh we're we're the ones in the dusty classic to Push Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin the most, so we deserve a shot. And that led to like bickering. The general manager Ava comes out and says, All right, you two, you two teams fight it out later today, and whoever wins gets the number one contender uh tender spot. Something else, like something else I've really been talking about the past couple weeks been happening, like weird, weird ass vignettes. Uh, I guess hyping up somebody coming that just they're weird. They keep like saying, oh man, it's three phases in. Uh, so, so, some shit. I wasn't paying attention. It's hyping up somebody to come. Hopefully, they, they, I'm sure they announced for either Roadblock, which is like their TV, like a TV special coming up in like a, a couple weeks, or Stand and Deliver in April. So we'll, we'll see where that goes. I wasn't like, n it's, it almost wasn't of note, so I wasn't going to bring it up, but there was a tag team of like Josh Briggs and Brooks Jensen. Uh, before and they broke up and they had like a little, they had, they had a little mini, t uh, not even like a feud, a mini tizzy. But uh, that match, the match they had on NXT was actually really good. 
um you know it was a battle of former uh tag team uh former members of a tag team former brothers and like like in a battle of people who are like five minutes away from just needing to call it a day and go bald I mean, go look at their hairstyles it's <laughs> but it was a surprisingly good match um brooks despite how he looks was uh great as the underdog getting his ass kicked baby facing here but josh briggs man he just he knows how to command the match he knows how to work it he you know give him some more reps but he's someone who's going to be like look, shooting up the card very soon look for him to get like a shot against oba in the near future or something like that we didn't turn our attention to some sort of psychiatric room or something where Joey Gacy is still in the straight jacket from last week. If you recall last week, uh, Dijak like beat him up and put him in a straight jacket and just committed kidnapping. Gacy's still in like tied up, and Dijak was like talking to him, saying, You, you know, you screwed up. Gacy's like, Oh, blah 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 about crazy talk. And a Luke, uh, let's see, get the name right, Luca Crucifino. He interrupts Dijak and tells him to basically knock off the kidnapping, just stop it. Dijak said, no, 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 no. So that's probably gonna be a match down the line. Next we have Mello come out at his barber shop, I think, something like that. And he basically just says, you know, Trick Williams was a snake. He um tried to take his spot. All Mello wanted was Trick to stay at his side. You know, Mello's number one. Trick and he said, Trick, you could have been as much as number two, but you tried to come for his spot, so he took you out. But, uh, you know, Trick, he says Trick's 15 minutes of fame are over. Then he turns his attention to Ilya. And uh, he's like, oh, Ilya, you know, I don't, basically, I don't want nothing to do with you unless you put that title on the line and close that out. We go to the aforementioned uh, Dumber Monk Center tag team match Chase U, Frazier Axiom. Really, again, which is kind of NXT's thing if you watch it, sprints of a match. Good sprint of a match. Chase you won, but bigger story here is that Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, better known as the OC and WD, came out and attacked the teams afterward. So I guess they're going to do a stint in NXT now. Which I mean, they're not doing anything on on SmackDown. They're they're still decent wrestlers who can help like put over young t younger tag team. So to be honest, I'm all for it. Awesome, get them on, get them on TV and get some uh, more names down at NXT to boost it up. Win, win, win. Now, Ilya res uh, responds to Melo saying, uh, you know, he'll put the tag title up at, at Roadblock, which is that TV special I was talking about. If Melo meets him face to face uh, next week in a ring, he's talking about, you know, Melo, you know, uh, Melo wants the title, Ilya wants Melo's soul. He did that little thing where his like eyes go red, red midway midway through the promo. So it was cool. Ilya has that uh, aura about him, like I'm just gonna murder you in the ring. There's nothing, nothing you can do about it. So I'm looking forward to that. And we go to the main event, which was Lyra Valkyrie versus Shotzi for the NXT Women's Title. And unfortunately, this got stopped prematurely as Shotzi, you know, not in storyline, little gently like blew her knee out midway through the match and later on was confirmed ACL you know feel bad for her thoughts and prayers and it sucks because I'm sure they're leading to a good match but kudos to NXT for like pulling a uh, little flippity doodah so the GM Ava came out and said oh you know you guys were promised a women's title match we're still gonna give it to you this is now open challenge and whoever comes out gets a shot and it was lash legend lash legend had just came off a match like literally before this beating kalani jordan in a who cares match so i don't really talk about it but uh lash came out and like it was i think it was like it had been less than 10 minutes of a match it was actually pretty decent lash is very underrated i thought she would be pushed higher than she is after her she body slammed Otis from Monday Night Raw a couple, like, a couple months ago. But, you know, let her continue to grow. She's doing, she's excelling in metaphor and her group. So let her continue to grow. 
and run this back in a couple months and i'm happy i'll see it lyra one close the show out again had to flip on a dime but they did good with what they were able to do and that's how xt ended for the week all right moving on to the last show of the week smackdown uh in the opening match in a battle of chamber participants tiffany stratton beat Liv morgan now during like and bianca belair was on not really on commentary but sitting next to commentary for this match and the funniest part was uh tiffany like out of nowhere just like bitch slaps the hell out of bianca and bianca's a very good seller i think underrated as a seller like she shines but i feel like no one talks about her selling maybe it's just my corner of the internet community wrestling community but she likes she sla like she sold that slap and she got hit with a chair or something which caused bianca to get on the apron and tiffany threw lib into bianca rolled her up one two three so it was it was building up tension for the match bianca and uh tiffany have been having issues for the last couple last couple of uh weeks and it, this added to it so overall good good, good opening match gets uh the women's chamber on hyped up so not bad and then we go to a debuting braun breaker who I, you know he's the nxt tag team champ but he's also just signed a contract to smackdown that was built up as him being the next big thing he beat nxt's dante chen which you know this match proved that this the, the squash match to introduce somebody like a monster is still effective it was awesome braun breaker running the ropes at like a bazillion miles an hour is also always cool to see he's being treated as a star look for him to go after bigger names you know either as soon as like uh, next month or poss possibly they'll wait till after mania for him to have a huge like big feud so we'll see although good introduction braun's awesome he's the future uh, then we go to Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn versus the Judgment Day B team of Don Mysterio and JD McDonough. Bate and, and uh, Dunn won. Phil, and then Phil, Finn Balor, Damian Priest came out to attack the guys they're facing in the chamber. Bate and Dunn outsmarted them, got away. And that, my friends, is the only build to their tag match at Limited Chamber that we got. So, yeah. Authors of Pain beat the Street Profits, and there was a lot of shenanigans during this match, uh, including Karrion Cross attacking Bobby Lashley's elbow, but with the ring post and a steel chair, uh, giving an injury, uh, giving a, a injury to Lashley. So look for that to be continued going forward. And I know there's a lot of things going on ringside, but AOP Profits they can run that back, and I wouldn't. My, my, both those know are good tag teams. They know how to work together. So, yeah, do it again. We get a shot of Dakota Kai being helped out by the trainer after she, you know, said she was attacked by damage. She told Bailey eventually that she was attacked by damage control. And, you know, Bailey's like, oh, you know, this is my fault because you're involved and that damage control will pay. And in, in the, in the main event, we have Drew McIntyre and LA Knight with uh, Logan Paul and then eventually Kevin Owens on commentary. You know, get, every, get almost everybody involved in chair match together. And then, you know, as things, these, these, these things do, uh, stuff broke down with Logan and KO and LA Knight and on commentary involving, uh, causing a DQ, everyone just fighting each other. And in the end, Air Lashley came out, I believe, and everybody's hitting finishers on each other. Then Drew stands tall, and out of nowhere, Randy Orton hits RKO, and that's how we close the night with all the chamber participants just laid out, and Orton standing tall after hitting RKO. And, and that was SmackDown. All right, talking about what this means for the future. Uh, we have the week of this was, that was behind us. We have chamber behind us, which means our next big stop on the road to wrestlemania is wrestlemania weekend you know next week uh dakota which was kind of buried wasn't really brought up as a big big deal but 
I don't know. We'll see if it does throughout the week. Uh, Dakota Kai's return to action. She's been out hurt with an ACL, I think. Something knee related. But she makes her return as her and Bailey team up against the Kabuki Warriors. So I'm curious to see there if Dakota put uh is on Bailey's side for real, or if she's just playing and they all whoop Bailey's ass in that match. We'll see. As you know, as Bailey EO gets heated up for Mania. Which is like based on everything that's going on. Can we like dub Bailey EO the forgotten main event? Because they weren't even on they weren't mentioned at all really except for the kickoff show at the chamber they weren't not mentioned at all the uh, press conference a while ago despite i think at the time being the only confirmed match for mania so the forgotten main event is heating up which is bailey eo uh look for lashley and cross to interact again friday being march and then being a month out of mania I'm curious to see if they hold off on the fight between Cross and Lashley for Mania, or if that's, that's done like the, was this like the SmackDown before, which is called like WrestleMania SmackDown or something like that. So that's stuff like that. So they might do it there, but either way, it'll be curious to see how they hold off on the actual fight, fight between those two for a whole month. We also got a announcement in that The Rock is scheduled to be on SmackDown this week. So look for him to Respond if you don't know Cody issued a challenge to a match against the rock at Limit Chamber. So look for it to rock either accept it or modify it in a way to where we get that again that rumored tag match of Cody Seth versus Rock Roman. If we get there somehow, we'll see. And if you know this leads us closer to seeing the rock and Cody get physical before you know night two of WrestleMania. We have a raw uh but uh, both chamber winners were from Raw, which makes sense because they were the stakes of the chamber were for the Raw titles. We had Drew McIntyre win the men, Becky Lynch win the women's. If you don't know, so look for Drew to be the biggest smug asshole ever, as he talks about you know overcoming every uh, five dudes on his own in the chamber, and you know talking about how he needs to be Seth Rollins for the people, how he needs to be the workhorse champion. How he needs to do this for our fans because he won his first title at Mania at the Pandemic Mania in front of zero people. So, and when uh, at Chamber Seth was medically, he said he's day, days from being medically cleared to wrestle. So look for Drew just to start uh, fucking Seth uh, shit up, just beating his ass on a weekly basis. I can see that going on to set up their match at Mania. Becky and Rhea, I don't know. I, I don't see them getting physical until like the very end. So I'm curious if like the next three weeks are just them doing the promos and stares at each other like they've been doing. We'll see. Look for uh Jimmy and uh and Jay to build against their uh at this point prediction, spoiler, whatever, brother versus brother match and mania. Jay calls out Jimmy. Uh, for costing him the uh, Intercontinental title. Or, you know, Jay shows up on SmackDown and just whoops ass. We'll see how that goes. But look for that to be built up too. And uh, last but not least, NXT. Uh, it, Mello and Ilya are going to have, like I said, face to face next week. That's going to build towards Roblox. That's going to be awesome. Those two are money, electric, whatever, they're going to ring together. And we'll see if at this point. I don't think it'll be this week, but it looks, let's let's see if it builds towards Roblox, where I do believe Trick comes back and sets up Trick Mel as stand deliver. But we'll see if they're mentioned. Also, in our tidbit in that last legend impromptu match with uh, Lyra, like uh, they showed backstage that Roxanne Perez, who's been you know bitching and moaning that she need, needs her true one on one shot. Every time she get she gets close to one, she gets screwed over. She's uh. Showing like she just got a shower because she fought earlier in the, in the night. It's like, oh, what's happening? Somebody informs her lash to this uh, impromptu match. Roxanne just throws the TV down as you know. Roxanne shows off this darker character, this like more heelish character. So look for that to be played up, and eventually, honestly, as soon as the next this week, we see her just straight up just beating the shit out of Lyra randomly to demand a towel shot. But where they go? We don't know. That's why we love the stories. All right. That's going to do it for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed this. 
let me know in the comments what your favorite part of last week was and what you think is going to happen this week uh don't forget to hit me up on everywhere i'm at it's heartfelt on all socials but yeah like and subscribe helps me out and i'll catch you guys in the next video i'm heartfelt peace